Hello investors, welcome back to the Trend Trader channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the stock market, stock market investing, and how investors can invest this in the stock market using a simpler approach. We know that most of the time we come up with videos where we do technical analysis, and sometimes we cover other things other than technical analysis. But not all of our subscribers, our viewers, uh, are doing a good job when it comes to stock picking. So if you are not there yet, if you are not confident that you can do a stock picking yourself, or you want to shift away from following other people's opinions, because as people, we can always have incorrect opinions about things. So one of the ways that uh, you can do it is to just invest in the stock market. By saying investing in the stock market, I'm talking about buying an index tracking fund, a fund that just tracks the whole stock market. There you don't need uh, to worry about uh, thinking about the companies that you're investing in. You just buy the fund. The fund already covers uh, all the stocks that are in the market. So these days we have things uh, such as the exchange traded funds, uh, which is a long name for ETFs. So when you, even if you go to ETFs, like I said, you can just go for ETFs that track the market. Uh, in the context of South Africa, you can either invest in the JSE Top 40, which tracks the Top 40 companies. Or you can go for the JSE All Share Kept uh, Index ETF. It's a long name, but it's from Satrix. But in short, you can buy the top 40 uh, companies in the JSE by market capitalization, or you can buy the, the whole market, okay? But now there's something that you need uh, to keep in mind. These uh, two ETFs, any ETFs that tracks the top 40, doesn't matter which company is coming from, and the side tricks uh, kept all share index ETFs, is that they are equity uh, ETFs. Whenever we invest, some people will talk about uh, different uh, kinds of funds. There are funds that are used uh, for income. There are funds that are used for capital growth. There are funds that uh, are a combination of uh, income and capital appreciation. So in that case, even though they could be similar product, uh, for example, ETFs, but the objective of the fund or of the funds are completely different. So there is something that is called a balance, balanced fund. So if you understand the different kinds of asset classes that are available to investors, a asset class such as a property, a money market, accounts, bonds, and equities, then that is what we're talking about when we're talking about a balanced fund. It's a fund that is a blend of all these different kinds of asset classes. I don't know a lot of ETFs that uh, do a balanced fund, but new funds or apps uh, used to have something that is called a uh, MAPS Protect and a uh, MAPS uh, Growth. So depending on the percentages of what is allocated uh, to equities uh, or the percentage that is allocated to something that is are considered to be less risky, things such as bonds. So you could, if you are consider yourself to be an aggressive investor, you could consider investing in MAPS uh, Growth ETF. Or if you are somebody that consider yourself to be a less aggressive or conservative, then you can look at something like uh, the MAPS uh, Protect. This, the purpose of this video is to just talk about the balanced fund. We are not necessarily, and <laughs> we are not promoting uh, the uh, APSA ETF or any other pro, uh, ETF provider uh, ETF. Okay. So now again, there is a balanced fund and then there is an equities fund. So now as an investor, you are probably wondering whether you should consider investing in a balanced fund or income fund or equities fund. The bottom line is that it depends on what you want uh, to achieve with uh, your investments. But we're just going to be objective and compare income funds, uh, balanced funds and uh, equities funds. We know that historically, over a long period of time, the equities, they outperform the other kinds uh, of asset classes, right? So equi historically, equities have outperformed 
uh, bonds, they have outperformed uh, property. But at the end of the day, all these things, we invest in them for different uh, things. So you need to understand why you invest in a particular fund. And then you need to be mindful of the expected uh, rate of return of that uh, particular fund. So in comparison to income fund, that fund is going to perform less compared to balanced fund and equities fund because majority of the investment in an income fund is either in bonds or in money market funds which is just basically it's like savings account where they receive uh, interest yes the interest rate uh, they will, it's always going to change the inflation rate is also always going uh, to change and that affects the in interest that you can receive uh, from those uh, underlying asset but historically income fund is always going to be the lowest uh, perform there are times where income fund is better than the other uh, kinds of funds then shifting to the balanced fund because it is a blend there is equities there is property there is income assets right so that one is going to perform sort of at the middle one of the reasons why it performs at the middle is because even if the equities perform better because of the component of the income fund remember now it's going to be an average of everything one sector or one asset class is going to perform much better one kind of asset class is going to perform less not necessarily worse but just less and then it's going to be the average of that based on how the assets are allocated in there and then lastly the equities over a long period of time is always going to outperform the other asset class why i emphasize over a long period of time is because the market does not go up in a straight line uh, there are bull markets which are followed by bear markets uh, there are cyclicals all those kinds of things so when we're in a bear market there's a general market decline meaning that the returns for that year or years during the bear market the returns are going to be negative whereas if you look at something like income fund that is invested in a savings account as long as the bank if that money is with the banks as long as the banks are paying interest the interest is always going to be positive it could be less it could be more but it is always going to be positive right if you buy a bonds just let's say government bonds because not every investor is able to invest in corporate bonds just focus on government bonds you still gonna always get uh, interest i know when it comes to bonds there is yield there's interest but for the sake of simplicity whatever that you get for investing in bonds let's just call it a uh, interest so the interest rate of the bonds is also always going uh, to fluctuate with the economy the inflation and all the other factors that uh, affect the rate of return uh, of your bonds so now you see now we've got all these uh, three things income fund a balanced fund and equities fund so depending on how you feel so if you want income fund going back to etfs there is the new fund it called a track etf it invests uh, in bonds and other cash equivalents not to say that it is not risky it's not about risk because it's about the duration of the investment and expected a uh, rate of return so you can consider if you are looking if or if you are a less conservative or if you are a conservative invest you can consider an income fund and if you think that you have to, uh, have some time to weather the storm but also you don't want to be too exposed in equities you also don't want to be too exposed um, in money market funds or bonds then you can consider that a uh, balanced uh, fund and also this is just in the context of the etfs if you shift away from etfs you go to things like a uh, unit trust there are more balanced funds uh, in unit trust compared to etfs uh, because it's just a different environment it's similar it's almost similar to etfs but it's a different uh, environment so there are more balanced funds with a uh, unit trust uh, pension funds uh, those kinds uh, of funds and then if you consider yourself that uh, you are more of an aggressive investor then you can consider investing uh, in an equities fund uh, basically every etf that has over 85 percent of its asset allocated uh, to stocks those are all uh, equities um, 
uh, equities funds whether it's a top 40 it's a kept all share uh, it's an esg it's a diversity it's a hospital it's tracking uh, different kinds of sectors as long as they have 90 percent of their assets allocated to equities you can consider that uh, to be an equities uh, fund now that we've mentioned etfs that invest in different sectors between an index tracking by index i'm talking about a top 40 uh, or all share index uh, versus sector specific etfs which one uh, should you consider right we are not uh, promoting any but we are just talking about the dynamics uh, of the products right uh, we know that some sectors are cyclical take mining for example there are periods where the mining sector performs well there are periods where the mining sector does not uh, perform well. So if you are overweight in a sector-specific ETF that is in a bearish uh, cycle, you are less likely uh, to perform well in the market in comparison to when you buy an, an ETF that tracks the entire market because the entire market is already uh, diversified throughout all these different uh, sectors the mining could be in a bearish cycle whereas the banking sector could be in a bullish uh, cycle even then again it's a it's going to be the average of these uh, bullish and bearish uh, sectors and depending on which one is stronger if you've got more cycles or sectors that are in a bullish uh, cycle then the etf can be expected uh, to perform well compared to if there were more companies that uh, uh, in the bearish uh, cycle so yes you can consider sector specific etf uh, let's say for example etf that tracks the mining sector like the satrix Racy, or etf that are tracking the property sector the satrix uh, property uh, etf that are tracking the financial sector like the satrix fin why do we always refer to satrix for me it's easy to remember but there's koshe there's one vest uh, there's signia all different kinds of ETFs. We are not promoting any specific uh, ETF provider. You just have to go there and find information. And in one of the videos in the past, we mentioned that uh, you can use ETFs SA.co.za. It's a website that lists at least all or most of the ETFs that are available in South Africa. You can filter them uh, by the ETF provider. You can look at the data sheet, the MTDs. Uh, you can look at the fees, how much it costs uh, to invest in a specific ETF. So there's a lot of information that uh, you can find there. Uh, you can also use something like TradingView to look at the chart to see how the ETF uh, performs and to compare different uh, ETFs, how they compare. But that is just uh, something for another day. The whole point of this video was to make investors aware that if they are not yet comfortable with a uh, stock picking there are things that they can consider doing which can at least get them or give them exposure to the market while they are learning the different kinds of uh, techniques or method for stock picking so in summary you don't need uh, to worry about stock picking if you are not there yet you can invest in etfs which tracks the whole market you, by tracking the whole market you have a choice you can look at income etfs you can look at balanced fund you can look at equity etfs and if you like you can also look at sector specific uh, etfs just keep in mind that all of them they've got their positive sides and they've got their negative uh, sides and then lastly one thing that you have to always keep in mind when it comes to etfs investing because they are already diversified they are looking at different uh, companies whenever you want to buy this etf and that etf and other etf look at the holdings of each etfs because now you might find out that this etf gives you a 20 percent exposure to naspas and this etf again it gives you another 20 percent exposure to naspas the other one gives you 50 percent so over 50 percent of your capital even though it is spread uh, between three different kinds of etfs but 60% of your capital or over 50% of your capital is actually invested in one company. And if you're using TradingView, you can overlay the chart. You can see the correlation between the ETFs in terms of the net asset value. Uh, it won't help you much if you invest in ETFs that are closely corre correlated, meaning if this ETF goes up, the other ETFs <laughs> goes up as well. If it goes down, 
it goes down uh, as well because now in terms of diversification and risk management you are not really doing much diversification you are not properly managing risk because you are basically invested uh, in the same thing so that's it uh, for today for those who haven't subscribed please uh, consider subscribing and if you find a value in this video please make sure that uh, you smash the like button we will see you in the next video